see this quickly in the book of Isaiah. See, there are three kinds of Christians. Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 8. Isaiah chapter 25. There are three kinds of Christians. There are Christians who want to go with Jesus all the way. And things must happen, not just in their life. God must use them to cause things up to happen. There are those who are nominal. I am for God. One day you will hear them speaking in tongues. The rest of the day, just do whatever they want to do. They go to school, they come back, they, they get a good job, just manage their family, just have life. The day they need to play lotto, they play it so that they can argument things. They go to party power. My pride friend or my, or my husband to be or my wife to be kiss me does not mean anything to them. It doesn't do them anything. So what is in a kiss? What is in a romance? When we get married, we will stabilize everything. We just love each other. Their heart doesn't break. He doesn't break. He doesn't break. They have a name that they are alive, but they are dead. They can do anything they like. All night long. You know, so many of you, we see somebody making some decision about pastor or say something about pastor. All through the night, a guy was sleeping with another guy. Or a guy was sleeping with another guy. They drank. They now woke up in the morning. And I said, eh, I don't think it's right for a Christian to be going to a church three times a week. He, he, he's, he's receiving directly from the snake. And you are around him. One day, one pastor said, I must get my church member back. I must get my church member back. Me, I know the church member is talking about. He just said, I went to his house. These are the people who are making the reason about the church. I said, yeah, you, know, you cannot be doing like that as a pastor. He said, when he got to his town, he saw him in the midst of many bottles of wine. <laughs> Me, I've seen him in the middle of the night when we are doing, when we are doing IVG. I see him come to carry guests. But I didn't tell any pastor. I didn't tell the pastor. And this is the person, a pastor is dying now. This is the person I say, pastor, we just want to tell you something. Some of the things that some of the church members are saying. Some of you are saying what serpent said to people. And you had it and you want to kill the pastor. With the information from a serpent. Somebody was touching, a girl was touching another girl, a boy was touching a girl. And they romanced themselves and they did video. And they did everything, they are saying everything. They now say, church these days, you've got to be careful. And he said, do you see what he said about you, pastor? Church, this day you've got to be careful. There is nobody who eats and drinks with Jesus that can talk against Jesus. You can never. I have never talked against any church that I left. I am with, still with all the pastors, 100%. I know what it means to be a Christian. It is not bread and butter. Me that you see standing on the pulpit today, I don't want to stand, but I don't want to tell anybody. I don't want to tell my wife. My wife was there. My wife, younger sister was there when my wife was breathing down in the morning. I said, well, what's wrong with you? Why are you breathing down? Yeah. yeah. He didn't know that all through the night, even without saying anything, I was just discouraged. That I was telling myself, God, I can't stand on the pulpit today. Can anybody, can somebody else preach the gospel? Please, I, I, I don't have this power. I said, I don't even know what is wrong. If you ask me what is wrong, I don't know. But I must not tell people so that my own <laughs> melancholy <laughs> does not. Just imagine that as my wife was breathing, I say, Oh, what are you? What is up? You say, Hey, <laughs> we're not on the house to, Hey, ah, hey. I just say, Come on, the gospel is not for the hey, and hey, hey. I'm just looking for how to get to the church so that I can lock the door of the office. And I just wish that somebody just comes there. We thought choke and say, Pastor, I know you are fasting, but the spirit moved me. <laughs> that you must drink this thing. <laughs> Provaster, that you you just heard from the spirit that make all choco for your pastor with evaporated milk. Half of the cup is evaporated milk. <laughs> I say, Pastor, drink before you go to the altar. The Lord. <laughs> I say, You said so. <laughs> Who am I to reject what the Lord sent? <laughs> this one is. He's looking at me and saying, wow, this is the matter. Look at it. And in this mountain, said the Lord of us, make 
unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lee, of, of, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees where they find. Go on. And they will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all the people and the fear that is spread over the nations. The next thing. And it will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all the faces of the earth. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the face of the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. Can you see? When you feast with the Lord, eyes are open. Death is swallowed up in victory. Your rebuke, that means your, 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 your poverty, your problems are taken away. But he said on the mountain, God is looking for people. He said, if you open for me, I will sit down with you to eat and drink. When that happens, I will open your eyes. When you eat with me, when I break the bread, your eyes will open. But the problem, many of us never get to the point of breaking bread. Destinies in Acts chapter 13 were locked. They were just prophets and teachers. Destinies were locked. The frontiers of the gospel that they need to move into was not happening. Destin Until they said, let us tarry. Let us eat and drink with the Lord. And they tarry. They began to minister to God. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how many days it took. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost said, Separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas. Ministries of the gospel change from that point on. God doesn't just speak, He will sit with you. That's the reason why, if you are a good businessman, how do we get partners to talk on the dinner table? That's the reason why you see these people, they do three course meals. They don't just say, Let's like, go to the supermarket and then you eat one thing, and under 30 minutes you have, got, you have wasted your money. I use food a lot to disciple people at the early days of this church in Ireland. Food a lot. I will take you to where we are eating. That's when I'll be hearing what I needed to hear from your mouth. They will give you three course meal over a period of seven hours. Everything they want to detect around you is detected. Everything they want to hear. There's no way you will, you will drink good milkshake and you will not talk. As you and Jesus eat together, he just, he just say, okay, I brought this one into my economy. This thing may take you three years. You better start. It may take some people six months. You better start. It may take you six months. You better start. Some people, it may take them seven years. But if you don't start, you won't even move close. You say seven years, pastor, seven years. Stay there, don't start. Some people have postponed their seven years. For the past 17 years, they have not started it. Whereas if they have done it, 10 years ago, they will have broken forth. There is no way you will get into this economy of feasting on fat things. There is no, you, it is now impossible to drown a room. It's too impossible now. He has eaten. Too impossible to break Oropo to pieces. It's too impossible now. To overcome Sema. It's too impossible now. I know how many of our fathers rose. They rose like this young people that you see. This is the way they rose. They did everything to be so well to bring him down. But he has eaten before that time. He had eaten. These are people who the first years of their, of their salvation. They went on five years of fasting and prayer. They met with angels. Do you hear the testimony of Bishop Waleoke here on the second day of the program in December? That God told him he didn't have fun, he didn't have anything. To leave Ibadan and go to Ogomoso. Ogomoso is almost four hours from Ibadan. No phone in the 80s. And it was a minister's wife who has gone on a crusade, who was giving birth and has been there for almost three days and was dying. And God told him, go there. And as he was knocking the door, a woman was dying. And he rescued the woman. And the child is a pastor now. They have eaten. God doesn't just give job to so Ananiah. The one that Jesus told, go and heal Paul. He said, there's certain disciple. Those have eaten with the Lord. That God could say, there's one disciple of mine there. Is Paul. Go on. 
He didn't ask, if I pray for him, will he see? No! These people raise cripple at will. He just got to Paul, a man blinded by God. There are three kinds of blindness. There is cataracts. That when they help you remove it, you will see. There is blindness by the devil. If they cast out demon, it will go. If God blinds you, you are blinded forever. And he got there. Brother Paul, the Lord Jesus Christ has sent me to you that you may see. This case fell off his eye. He didn't move an anaya. Hey. He didn't move him. Will you stand up for your destiny? Will you stand up for the destiny of others? Will you go on a journey with the Lord until he feeds you with the man of heaven? And your eyes are open so that death is swallowed up in victory. Stop all this human Christianity. All your children will soon be drug addict if you continue with human Christianity. I go to church, you know, church is not everything about my life. To even make that kind of a statement and it's not heavy on your mouth. For a child of God to make that kind of a statement and it is not heavy on your mouth. And you're not afraid. The church brought and bought by the precious blood of Jesus and they say, church is not everything about my life. How did you get to that point? How did you ever get to that point? Even if you are not going, how did you ever get to that point? Sometimes, I go to some people's room and I want to talk with them. And as I'm sitting down, I take my phone. I'm placing it on the table. Thinking that the book that I see on the table is just a book. And I will hear, I've had it from two people. I've had it from Senab. I've had it from, from Ibuko. Say, that's my Bible, that's my Bible, that's my Bible, that's my Bible. Don't place anything on it, that's my Bible. And I'll be afraid. I'll be afraid. Say, so, wow. And you just come to the church and just walk out. And you just see a pastor and you just talk anyhow. Do you know the meaning? Do you know what it means to be a pastor? Do you not want to carry costs for the rest of your life that nobody can remove? I mean it. Do you know what it means? Do you know what it means to be a pastor? Do you know what it means for a church to stand? Do you know what it means? Apart from Jesus die, somebody else also has to die. He has to die to dignity. He has to die to prosperity. He must not pursue his life. He must not pursue his glory. He has to die to humanity. And then Jesus can raise something up. And say, just, just, church is not all about my life. Who put that idea in your head? When people who prosper the most in life, like David, said, I would rather be a cleaner, I'll be a slave, a servant in your house, than to be a king somewhere else. They just try your anything that has to do with God. Once you mention God with anything, they just try your heat because they have eaten them. When you have eaten the manna, you'll be afraid. The fear of God will enter your heart. When you have not, when you have eaten the other side manna, I will know you are not afraid of nobody. One of them walked in here the other day, wanted to come and talk with me. Just one. I just look at him like this. Talk with me. Impossible. I blocked that gate. With all I've had everywhere, you want to talk with me? So do what? You're not even afraid of the things that I know that I've had. You're not even afraid that you know that I've had. And you still presently walk up to me to say what? I was talking to my son, whom I went to pick from the house today. And I said, I know what you're going through. I went through it as a child of God, but my own is that. <laughs> I didn't go through my own running away from the church. I just come to the church. I said, guys, I is everything, oh. 1992, I said, I have everything. I said, yesterday, brother Isaiah, I'm, I'm actually mentioned the name. He brought three guests from Oyo. I was sleeping on the same bed with them, and I was running around them because they themselves were so close to me. So I said, that's what I want to say. That's, I'm telling you what I said. I, everybody was laughing. I said, why are you laughing? The reason is that the economy of hell, the imagination is so fifid in my brain, even as I'm talking now. It runs me. So where will I run to? So that I can go and there and go to hell. Never. That's why I say, Pastor, don't you see that I mention my own sin here? You don't have to ask me. See, if I sleep with anybody, you see you that I slept with, sleeping with is free. 
You can't condemn me. I don't know how all of you look. You like your own personal glory so that people will think of you as a... Don't think of me as a big man. I just want to be okay. <laughs> don't, don't think of me. Don't think of anything. Just don't think, think about yourself. Just leave me alone. If I kiss now, they just come here and say, I kiss somebody. Have I not told you before I kiss somebody? I kiss this. One day I was talking, I said, I think I passed through about 20 women. The one did like this, I said, he did like this. I did like this. <laughs> Are you listening? What comes Did they complain to you? Did they complain to you? Yeah. I will not go to hell for nothing. Some of you are so ashamed. You are defending satanic installations. You didn't install those things in your body. Did I install liking for a woman? If I have my chance, I like anybody. No. I just want to like Bible, Jesus Christ. But I just came out, I just said, beautiful guess who? Phew. Shit. <laughs> what is this? I blink, I blink, I blink. Wow. I said, God. <laughs> Problem deal. <laughs> And they were now bringing women to my bed. I have never left the church for one minute. I have never left God for one minute. I've never. I'm, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how all of you do that. I say, I'll be in my house. I want to sort out myself. Sort out myself? Ah, I'm going to grow deeper into that. That guy is coming to meet me in the house. I need to drag everybody to the church so that anything anybody wants to say, they can be saying it. One day, because me and one sister were so close, they have done a whole Bible study because of me. And I knew. And they printed posters. They say, how should a brother relate with a sister? This is the way I sat down through. <laughs> Everybody was, I can't forget. And after we finished, the president came to me. How do you see the Bible study? I said, it's very great. The following day, I was the one holding the microphone. Is it not my own? They are saying. Is it not for me to be delivered? Why will I be angry? I was never angry. I've never been angry. For what? I just see many of the things that we fall into as a child play. And I come to Jesus and say, this is what is happening. Oh. Help your son. Oh. Are you listening to what, are you listening to what I'm saying? The, the revelation of hell is vivid in my imagination on a daily basis. And I just think, any little thing I do, I just think. I'm just smelling. What if somebody dies? So what is going to happen? I'm just saying, please, God, <laughs> here and here, forgive us, please. I'm not even interested in this thing. Just forgive us. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And somebody will just talk anyhow. You have not been brought into the economy of heaven.